All right, guys, uh, we are going to consider our mechano techniques N5 working with the rope uh, haulages uh, and the aerial rope wear. So it's actually working with the aerial rope wears. Uh, but the formulas that you're going to consider on the rope haulages is uh, actually the same as the ones that you're going to consider when you're working with the aerial rope wears. So we are going to see that on 3.2, but 3.1, just considering what we are given in this case, it was just to list four safety aspects to consider in the design of driving gear of mechanical rope haulage. That is when you're dealing with a rope haulage, what is it that you're supposed to consider as the safety aspects, all right? So on that case, you must consider the longer lifespan. So you must consider uh, the longer lifespan. You must also consider the heavier load transported. That is the heavier load transported. That is the heavier load transported. You must also consider the steeper inclines. That is the steeper inclines. All right, so you've got the steeper inclines accommodated. That is also to be considered and also the higher capacities handled. The higher capacities handled. All right, so these are the aspects that you must consider in the, uh, in the design of the driving gear. All right, so when we are... Considering these, uh, you are going to obtain your four marks there. 3.2, which is the major part that I need us to consider. Actually, you can uh, uh, obtain all these marks on these calculations. There's nothing that you are having on this part. There's actually nothing there. So one, you must consider the type of the cable that you're given, uh, the system that you are given. All right, so you're given that the ropeway of a mono cable system. This is a mono cable system. All right, so you're gonna talk about the information that you're given there, but what is it that you're supposed to consider on a mono cable system? You are going to have a typical design of this nature where you are going to be having, uh, let's just consider a simple sketch. So I'm just gonna have a simpler sketch to consider. So having uh, the seg, which is uh, taken at the halfway of uh, the given uh, towers uh, one and two. So we're going to consider, all right, this is just a little bit something of this nature. All right, so this is where you're going to consider the seg, which is considered as H. This is like the height in meters. So that is your seg between uh, the two towers the distance between the two towers and also you're going to consider s as the span so you're going to be given the span uh in meters also the distance that you're given uh that is the 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 seg is in the middle then the span is the distance between the two towers that you're given all right then the mass i'm just going to indicate m1 representing the force mass so this is the force mass that is the mass of force per meter so this represents the mass of force the mass of force per per meter so you're going to consider these uh from the information sheet from the summary of the rope areas you are given consider or depending with uh, the type of rope that you're given so it must be from the type uh the type of rope that you are given uh the type of rope uh given so this is from the formula sheet all right then m2 that is uh you are also going to consider your m2 this is the mass of the loads so this is uh the mass of loads mass of uh, loads which is uh, on the other part or on the other section so given this mass so we're going to talk about um, how to determine our M1, which is the rope mass or the mass of, uh, uh, the mass of, uh, guys, where am I getting the force? I'm talking about the rope here. I'm writing the force. This is the mass of the rope per meter, the mass of rope per meter, not the, the mass of force, guys. This is like uh, 
we are talking about uh, uh, the uh, the the mass of the rope that you are considering a meter. Okay, so this is uh, what you are going to be actually considering. So we're going to take the information and see how to attempt typical questions. Like I said, uh, this is a monocable system, so you're going to consider that. So a monocable system that you're given, it carries 460 kilograms of what? This is 400 kilograms, 460 kilograms loads. This is the loads. So you're considering... The loads, this is the mass of loads, which is what? M2. So according to the information that we are given, we are given M2. So I'm just going to take our data there. So we are given uh, M2, which is 460 uh, kilograms, which is taken per 90 uh, meter interval, which is then given here as the span. So the span is 90 meters. So and the seg in the mid to 2,6. Remember the span is s so we are given s as the span which is 90 meters and the seg which is our edge which is taken as 2,6 uh, meters in the middle so this is the ultimate st strength of the cable so we're also given the ultimate strength of 600 kilo uh, newton and also the stress is not to exceed 1300 megapascal which is the ultimate stress so this is the ultimate. It is not supposed to exceed this. So we are given two things there, the ultimate stress. And uh, let's just start with the ultimate strength, which is the one that you're given. So you're given the ultimate strength. All right. That is the ultimate strength is given as 600 kilo Newton. So just take a consideration. This is given as 900 kilo, uh, 600, 600 uh, kilo uh, Newton. Then the stress is the one that is 1,300. So this is the ultimate stress. So we're also given uh, the ultimate stress, which is given as 1,300. So that's 1,300 uh, megapascal. So remember the stress is our alpha. So we are going to talk about how, how do we consider the formulas with the part that we are given there. But consider also, the presentation of this part of the diagram, there's nothing much, guys. There is nothing much. Do not even worry. So I actually have this question so that we have like step by step in answering these typical questions because this question, you can actually answer as many questions as long you do understand how am I going to attempt this question. So you consider one is the monocable. So then uh, you're given the mass of the loads, whatever that you're given. So in this case, on 3.21, you're asked to calculate each of the following, the diameter of the rope of a what? This is of a six over seven construction. That is the type of rope that you are working with. It's a six over seven construction. If you are to consider here, we are given from our information sheet, the summary of the rope areas. So that is where we are given the type of rope. So in this case, we are considering the number one, which is the six over seven construction. So in this case, what is it that you're supposed to consider? There's the mass per, per meter. Okay, let me just explain this information that you're given here before we attempt our questions. All right, so we've got the first thing that you're given on our table, which is representing the mass per meter length. The mass per meter length is the one that I was talking about as the mass of the rope per meter, per meter that you're given, that is per meter length, this whole part. It is representing the mass of rope. So this is the mass of rope uh, per meter, all right, which is per, per meter length, which is the kilograms. That is why you're given kilograms per meter. But I want you to be careful as long you are working with this section, you can see that there is a small letter D on this section. There is a capital letter D. This is a significant thing for us to consider. It is very, very significant. The D that you are given there is supposed to be in millimeters. This is our diameter in millimeters if you're working with this side whenever you're given the capital letter d it is in meters 
So you can have your answer in meters, then you convert it to millimeters, it's fine. But the small letter D always, when you substitute this, it is supposed to be in millimeters. So these formulas that you are given to calculate the mass of rho per meter, it's a formula. The answer is supposed to be kilograms per what? Per meter. Yes, you are using the diameter in millimeters, but the answer is kilograms per meter. So this is for a six over seven construction, for a log decoil, for a spiral rope, for a flexible type. So you are supposed to consider with the type of rope that you're given. That is what you have on this side. Then we move on to the other section here. On this section, they are talking about the ultimate strength, which we are given on this part here. If we are, if we are to consider on our information, they gave us something about the ultimate strength. And this is the one they are referring to as the ultimate strength. What is the relationship that you are given? So if you have to consider from this, it's a formula that you're actually given that this ultimate strength it is equal to the product of the rope area times and uh, the ultimate stress, which is the product of these two. So in an actual sense, we are simply saying uh, the ultimate, that is the ultimate strength, the ultimate strength, it is equivalent to the product. It is equal to the product of these two which is the rope area and the ultimate stress. So if our ultimate stress, remember this is the, the symbol for the ultimate stress, which is our alpha. If it is represented by this, what does it mean? It means, guys, this check note, check, check here. This is your alpha here. This is your ultimate stress, this one, this one. So what is remaining here, this part? What is remaining here? If the ultimate strength is the product of the rope area and the ultimate stress, and we have taken the ultimate stress, this one. So what is remaining? It is what? Representing the rope area. So these formulas that we are given there, they are for the rope area, this part. I want you to see here. So it's area times the ultimate stress. So this one, the 0, 0,3, Six is the area. Then we've got our ultimate stress. So it's area times area. So this is the area. This is the area. This is the area according to the type of what rope that you are given. So if you are given a six over seven construction, it means our formula is going to be 0, 0,36 D squared for area. We are talking about the area, but combined together, this area, all right, sorry, I did not want to erase. Okay, it's fine, I already erased it. So, but combined together, we can see that this is giving us, the, the combined part of this is giving us the ultimate strength, which is the product of these two, the rope area and what? The ultimate uh, stress. So it means from this formula, we can calculate whatever that we want from what we are given. So in this case, the question, is it on diameter? You have to calculate the diameter. Considering the type of the rope that you are given. So let us consider what we have in this case. So our question, which is uh, the first part, it was to calculate the diameter of the rope of these six of So we need the diameter. So where can we obtain the diameter? By, by just... This part that I was explaining from our table there, we can see that the diameter can be obtained from this part of the ultimate strength. Because from the ultimate strength, there is a diameter to be considered there, if you are to consider here from this formula that we are having of the ultimate strength. There is a diameter to be considered. So just because of... Uh, where we are having our formula, guys, I'm just going to use this side so that you do understand me. So I'm just going to consider this. So that's our 3.21. So we need to have the diameter. Okay. So from this, we are considering one, it's a six over seven construction. So it's a six over seven construction where the formula is given as this. For what? For the out, we are still on the ultimate strength. So this ultimate strength 
it is equal to the rope area, which is considering a six over seven construction. This is the formula, uh, 0 0.36 uh, D squared times what? Times the stress. So in this case, you need to calculate D. So you can have your D from this uh, from this formula. The ultimate stress, remember, uh, the ultimate strength we are given 600 kilo newton. So we can substitute this. Uh, that is 600 kilo newton in place of the ultimate uh, strength. That is 600 uh, kilo newton is equal to 0, 3, 6 times D squared. Remember, you want to calculate D times the ultimate stress. We have this ultimate stress from our information that was 1,300 megapascal. So take note, a mega, that is times 10 uh, to the exponent of 6. So that's it. We can calculate our D. What we need is to determine uh, the value of D. So how can you obtain your D, guys? You can divide this side, you can divide by 0 0.36 times 1,300 times 10 to the exponent of six, both sides. So this, you're going to also divide it both sides, guys. So instead, let me not write it this way. Let me just divide it straightforward. So it means our D squared is going to be this side divided to this part that I was showing you guys. So it's going to be 600 times 10 to the exponent of three divided to... 0, 0.36 times the 1,300 times 10 to the exponent of 6. All right, so that means we can obtain our D from there. Remember, D is just the square root of the answer. This is D squared. So this, the square root, we are going to obtain the D. So the D is going to be what? The square root of this. So as you can see, like I explained, this side, as you are working with this D, the diameter, it is in meters. So the answer that you're going to obtain, which is 0, 0.0358 uh, something and, and so on and so on and so on. That answer that you're going to have, it is going to be in meters. If you are to convert to the millimeters, that is up to you. You're now finding the small letter D. So from those calculations that you're given, how do you convert to uh, the millimeters, you multiply by 1,000. Those digits on your calculator as they were, you multiply that by 1,000, you are going to obtain something like 35,806, uh, something like that. That is in millimeters. So the small letter D, you write it in millimeters. The capital letter D, it is in meters. So that you do not confuse in any calculation that you're going to have. All right, so that was our diameter. So it depends with the answer that you want to write at the end. You want to write in millimeters or in meters. That one, it's up to you since you're not given the instruction. But that is how we could have calculated our diameter from the ultimate strength and the ultimate stress. 3.22, the mass of rope per meter. So if you check from this, the mass of rope per meter, this is our M1. I talked about this, this or M1. So how do you determine this M1? It's already given from our information sheet from this table that you're given the mass of rope per meter, which represents our M1. This is representing our M1. According to the type of the rope, we are working with a six over seven construction. So that's D squared over 250. Like I said, this small letter D always it's in millimeters. All right, so that is uh, uh, 3.22. So in this case, we are actually calculating M1. Uh, that is the mass of rho per meter. So that is our mass of rho per, per meter. So according to the type of rope that we are given, the formula is going to be d squared over 250. If it was a logged coil, you're going to consider, you consider according to the type. So this one, that's d squared over uh, 250. So you're going to have d squared over 250. This is small letter d. Like I said, whenever you are going to have the small letter d, it is in millimeters. So you're going to use from the d that we calculated the one 
in millimeters, the small letter D, which is uh, the 35,806. The answer that you got here is the one that you're going to use, but this is D squared. So we're going to square this over 250. It's very true. When you substituted, this is in millimeters, but according to the formula, the instruction, the answer is in kilograms per meter. So do not uh, confuse that part. The answer is going to be in kilograms per meter, even though you are substituting this. So it is actually by the squaring that we are doing, it uh, is going to be five. So that was going to be five comma one, two, eight, uh, something like that, kilograms per, per meter. So that is what? That is what you're given. So this is the mass of rope per, per meter, which is your, your M1. So if you are to consider this, we have got our M1, uh, our M2, remember we're already given that, okay? So that is uh, how you're supposed to calculate this. 3.23, the tension due to self-weight, the tension due to self-weight. All right, so I'm going to talk about this uh, with the formulas so that you do understand uh, me in this calculation. So it follows, let me also, okay, no problem, but in this case, we do not need uh, that uh, table that you're given. So this is the formula that you must consider. Uh, you're going to work with this also a given from your formula sheet on page three. So from your formula sheet on page three, that is the formula that you're going to consider. Uh, I just want to check the name that is given there, but uh, I'm just going to write, it's it's right. It's written as self-weight from your formula sheet. If you check on uh, page three, uh, it's actually page two on page two, sorry, on page two, it's written self-weight. All right, but in this case, I'm just going to write it as T weight, but it's written as self weight. That is the same formula that I'm talking about on your page two. So that is M1 times G times S squared, which is the span uh, over eight times H, which is the, uh, the given, uh, from the given span that we have. Remember, we also have the seg, which is also uh, given from our information. So we are, we are given everything, or we calculated, remember M1, it represents that mass of rho per, per meter. So do not forget this is your mass of rho per meter. All right, so also we know this, this is our span, and we also consider our seg. So everything is there, so this is the, the way that you're considering the the tension measured in what in newtons so by this guys we can substitute our values so like i said from your formula sheet it's given as self weight it is the same part that i'm talking about all right so that self weight that is going to be given as uh, m1 remember from the mass of rho per meter that we calculated we got 5,128 times g the gravitational acceleration 9,81 times the span squared that is, remember from our information, our S was 90 meters. So we are going to consider 90 and H is 2,6. So that's, we've got 90 squared over eight times H and our H is 2,6. So that was going to give us uh, the self weight, uh, which is T weight uh, of, uh, 19,590,193 uh, in Newton. So what is important is the formula. So do not worry about that because you're given uh, this formula uh, from your formula sheet page number two, uh, formula 57. This is your formula 57. All right. Then 3.24, the tension due to one load. You're also given that uh that is one load so on page three it's actually on page three uh which is formula number 58 yeah that's formula number 58 so you're given that formula uh which is the t uh which is the one load so it's given as one load but in this case i'm just gonna write it as t load all right so that's 3.24 so the t load which is our one load, it is given as M2 
which is the take note you're dealing with the Lord, the Lord. So the Lord, it must be M2, which is the mass of what? Of Lords times G times S, everything that you are given is over four times H. So this time we do not have S squared, but the formula guys is there. So do not worry, it's gonna be S squared or this and that, uh -uh, do not worry. So M2 is the mass of Lords, the one that you are given from your information sheet there, uh, 460 kilograms loads. I explained that before. So we have that 460. So it was just going to substitute. That is 460. All right. So like I said, there is mass, all right, mass of loads. So that is uh, what you're going to consider in this case. All right. The gravitational acceleration of 9,81, our span is 90, only that we are not squaring in this case. Over 4 times h, remember your h does not change, that is 2,6. So that was going to give us the T load in newtons. All right, so that was going to be 39,051,346 in newton. So that is how you can consider uh, the the one load. So this is for one load, that is T load. So it's given as one load from your formula sheet, the tension due to one load. All right, then also 3.25, you're given to consider the safety, uh, the factor of safety. What is it about the factor of safety? All right, so 3.25, that is 3.25, the factor of safety so the factor of safety is given as the ultimate strength so we are going to take it from the ultimate strength uh divided to the waking strength so this is divided to the waking strength so that is the waking strength remember it is actually the sum of the two that is we're gonna have our ultimate strength, remember, we are given this. So it is the ultimate strength over the working strength, which is the sum of these two loads that you calculated before. That is the weight that you are given, the self-weight and the one load. So you're going to add the self-weight to the T load, which is the one load. So that is the condition that you're given there. Just like that. So meaning to say we have got the, fake, uh, the, 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 the factor of stress in this case. So you can consider the factor of uh, stress which is given as the ultimate strength. Remember we have this. The ultimate strength we are given 600 kilo Newton. So that is 600 kilo Newton. 600 times 10 to the exponent of three over the sum so these are in newtons so it's a, it's, a, it's a constant that you're going to have is you're not going to have any unit there so remember your self weight which is t weight it was 19500 so you're just going to substitute those values uh 19590,193 plus our one load which is our t load remember it was 39,051,346 so so you're just substituting the answers that you already got previously. So that was going to give us 10,232. And it's a constant since you are to consider that these are the same units and these units will cancel Newton over Newton. So it's just going to be a constant. So these are the typical questions that you're going to have uh, on this part of uh, the rope uh, villages and the area of ropeways. So I want to thank you guys for the membership family uh, for this request, which is also going to others, helping others at the same time. So we shall have typical exam questions of this nature so that you see that it is just one and the same. I want you to go through these formulas, your formula sheet, like I was saying, go through those formulas from the formula sheet. So it's just going to change on this type of uh, rope that you're given is it a six over seven, like we saw from those uh, given types, uh, is it gonna be a log decoil? Is it going to be a spiral rope type? Is it going to be a flexible type? Those are the typical questions, but we shall have those questions so that you do understand.